Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to not pick a side in Microsoft's increasingly spicy quest to acquire Activision Blizzard King. Hey, Bruce, now, come on, that's not true. Here at Inside Games, we are on a side. The gamer's side. Uh, I don't want to say that word anymore. And for once, we're <laughs> not it. the only ones. <laughs> the United States Federal Trade Commission claims to be doing gamers uh, of the world a solid by suing Microsoft to shut this whole acquisition business down. And after Phil Spencer went on all those podcasts and did all those interviews, I was convinced that winning smile, ha, ah, let's check in with the big guy to see how this news is going down. We have Phil Spencer from Xbox with us. Oh, man. We, we really never seen Papa Phil so grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's got his Xbox is all X bucked up, Charlotte? I can't say for sure, but it's the face that I make when Call of Duty hits me with an 80 gig patch. Come on, Phil, you gotta upgrade to fiber. Get that memory unit. Well, luckily for Phil, he might have another 69 nice. billion dollars loosened up in the old budget to upgrade his internet thanks to this FTC lawsuit. It's a weird move by the FTC, which in recent decades has never met a merger it hasn't liked. <laughs> uh, antitrust, I don't know her. But in this case, <laughs> they have decided to put their foot down. Yeah, the whole ordeal so far, Sony is the only entity that had a problem with it. Uh, I guess we can add the FTC to that list now. Yeah, and, and what a commission to add to that list. If, if, <laughs> it, you know, and people you don't want to have to worry about in putting together a corporate merger. The FTC is pretty up there. Anyway, uh, much <laughs> like Sony has been arguing, the FTC agrees that the merger is bad for competition in the gaming industry. In a release, the FTC said that the acquisition would enable Microsoft to suppress competitors to its Xbox gaming consoles and its rapidly growing subscription content and cloud gaming business. Specifically, they expressed concern that Microsoft would make its games exclusive to their consoles. Now that's something that both Sony and Nintendo do, but the FTC seems particularly worried about all of the studios that Microsoft has been buying lately. Yeah, in a complaint, they specifically singled out Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax, and that's the parent company of Bethesda. And they pointed to Microsoft's decision to make the upcoming game Starfield and Redfall exclusives. Ooh, uh, that happened, quote, despite assurances Microsoft had given to European antitrust authorities that it had no incentive to withhold games from rival consoles. Uh, the FTC said. Yeah, but an interesting side note here, after the FTC made that claim, the EU responded that it wasn't true. In a statement to <laughs> Seeking Alpha from the EU Commission, the group said that it cleared the Microsoft ZeniMax transaction unconditionally and that no such assurances had been given beforehand. The group also said that the conclusion that there are no competition concerns did not rely on any statements made by Microsoft about the future distribution strategy concerning ZeniMax's games. Whoops, I guess. How does that even happen? <laughs> I, I don't know. This is the whole thing is so weird. Uh, and a an, very important thing to get completely wrong, uh, especially when it's listed as one of the primary arguments in blocking the acquisition. Yeah, that's actually not the only weird bit in the FTC's complaint either. We'll pick through it all in just a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Inside Games is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command. Customize your fleet and crew to dominate the galaxy in this award-winning Star Trek 4X MMO. Experience the entire Star Trek universe with all of your favorite franchises. Of course, you can play on mobile for free, but it's now also on PC. And one of the most beloved Star Trek franchises is finally arriving in Star Trek Fleet Command. Let's all welcome the Deep Space Nine crew. Epic Cisco, Rare Kira, and Rare Miles O'Brien. This new arc will offer something for everybody with three new officers focused on ship survivability, new missions following the fan favorite narrative of Deep Space Nine, and Alliance star bases. These star bases are a physical embodiment of an Alliance's strength, which push members to work together for shared progression and mutual benefits as they navigate inter-alliance diplomacy conflict and all-out war. Players within an alliance will now be able to build a starbase. So if you're interested in playing Star Trek Fleet Command for free on PC or mobile, just click the link in our description and go download it and play with your friends. It's gonna be awesome. Hey, thank you, Star Trek. All right, back to the FTC's lawsuit, though. The gist of their argument is that lots of Activision Blizzard franchises like Call of Duty and Diablo are currently multi-platform. But if Microsoft buys them, that could change. In their announcement, the FTC wrote that Microsoft would have both the means and motive to harm competition. 
They could do that by manipulating Activision's pricing, degrading Activision's game quality or player experience on rival consoles and gaming services, changing the terms and timing of access to Activision's content, or withholding content from competitors entirely, resulting in harm to consumers. Yeah, Holly Vadova. Holly Vadova? <laughs> Holly Vadova, Batman, uh, who is director, <laughs> uh, who is director of the FTC's Bureau of Competition, threw some plasma grenades at Microsoft in announcing the lawsuit, saying, "quote Microsoft has already shown that it can and will withhold content from its gaming rivals." Vadova went on to say, "Today we seek to stop Microsoft from gaining control over a leading independent game studio and using it to harm competition in multiple dynamic and fast-growing gaming markets." All right, well that makes sense, sort of. Uh, it turns out the definition of quote dynamic and fast-growing gaming markets uh, is actually quite narrow <laughs> when it comes to the FTC. Uh, getting into that involves poking through a 23-page legal document. So we're just gonna put a pin in that for right now. <laughs> yeah, there's another uh, and larger mystery here. Why is the historically merger-friendly FTC doing this right now? After all, they let some massive deals go through over the years. Mm -hmm. In 2010, the U.S. government allowed Ticketmaster to merge with the world's largest concert promoter, Live Nation. And look how that worked out. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I created a giant monopoly that's led to massive issues for fans. Uh, that whole recent debacle with the Taylor Swift tickets Fans were furious after seemingly nobody was able to buy those tickets. Yeah, you don't want to get on the wrong side of Swifties. Second only <laughs> to the Barb's, the Nicki Minaj stands. That, now they will, they'll give you a rent for your money. <laughs> when it comes to this deal, size isn't an issue for once, am I right? The US government has allowed far bigger mergers than Microsoft and Activision, like the $100 billion merger of H.J. Hines and Kraft Foods, the $130 billion merger of Dow Chemical and DuPont, and the merger of the world's two largest brewers, Anheuser-Busch Anheuser InBev and SAB Miller, at more than $104 billion. So $69 billion's nothing. <laughs> Lose it behind the couch. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, and further back, even the number one oil company, Exxon, was allowed to merge with its number two competitor, Mobile, in 1999. So yeah, we're asking the question. Why are they slamming the brakes on the deal right now? Why now? Why the games? The best we can figure as to why the, they're putting down roadblocks is that there's been growing anti-corporation sentiment in both the U.S. populace and the federal government, so sooner or later an example would be made. Here is the political landscape at the moment. The FTC's current chairperson is Lena Khan, an avant-garde economist and outspoken critic of tech giants like Amazon. Khan told the New York Times in 2018, quote, as consumers, as users, we love these tech companies, but as citizens, as workers, and as entrepreneurs, we recognize that their power is troubling. Well said. She said that, quote, we need a new framework, a new vocabulary for how to assess and address their dominance. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but Khan's appointment to the FTC didn't happen in a vacuum. The US Senate confirmed Khan as FTC commissioner with bipartisan support in 2021, because they agreed with her anti-Amazon views, as reported by The Verge. Uh, the move was so pointed that Amazon even asked that Khan recuse herself from any proceedings involving the company a few days after her appointment. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We got a hatchet yeah. chairperson out for blood. It just I guess the axe <laughs> just happened to fall now. So yeah. That... Well, I guess someone hates deals and free two-day shipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to probably turn down a lot of a lot of sweet uh, kickbacks if you're getting in the way of deals like this. Jeez. Imagine all the champagne that Lena Khan could be drinking right now. She just <laughs> took the day off. But it's Amazon Basics champagne. It's probably got <laughs> one bubble in it. <laughs> so in summary, the U.S. government is growing more distrustful of megacorps. Probably a good thing for once. And are appointing agency members accordingly. The FTC, with those anti-corporate wins at their backs, are picking the Microsoft acquisition as the first battle to send a message to other large companies that maybe they're large enough already. I love it. They were like, hey, you know what, ExxonMobil? Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft and Activision? What the fuck? <laughs> Video games, hold on! <laughs> uh, whatever the reason, we could now be in for a protracted legal battle, uh, contrary to Microsoft's prediction that the Activision deal will finalize by next year. Uh, Bloomberg recently reported that Microsoft, which previously said the acquisition will close by June of 2023, now will not comment. <laughs> So it's a sticky situation. 
And it's it's still not just the U.S. either. They still need 13 yeah. other countries to sign off on this deal. And while no other regions have actively opposed it yet, some have slowed down to take a bit of a closer look. The U.K.'s Competition and Markets Authority signaled a few months ago that they'd further investigate the Activision Blizzard deal. And the European Commission has also opened what it called an in-depth investigation into the acquisition. We have no idea if they will oppose the acquisition as directly as the FTC has done. Uh, and on that note, let's circle back to the complaint itself and see what the FTC's real beef is. Yeah, the complaint is weird from the start since it arbitrarily constrains the entire competition conversation to only high-spec consoles, which it also establishes as only the Xbox Series consoles and the PlayStation 5. There's even a bit where the FTC explains that PS5 and Xbox Series are for the real gamers instead of something dumb for babies like the Switch. <laughs> Within that weirdly narrow scope, the FTC then makes the exact same argument that Sony did in their filed complaints. Hmm, that owning Call of Duty would give Microsoft an unfair and competition-killing advantage in console sales, cloud gaming, and subscription services. I gotta say, simply refusing to consider anything else surrounding these consoles as competition within the whole games industry is really bizarre and potentially a disingenuous attempt to make the acquisition sound larger in scope than it really is. The complaint even cites revenue across the entire industry to kind of establish the boundaries before zooming way, way, way in on a much smaller chunk of it, uh, which again, feels deceptive. I guess it's the best case they have to make, but still. I agree. Uh, Scott Shackford, an associate editor at Reason, slammed the FTC lawsuit and pointed out that Microsoft only had a 6.5% share of the gaming market in 2020. That actually would rise to 10.7% if it added Activision Blizzard. And yet, the FTC's complaint makes it sound like Microsoft would be cornering the entire market. Even if the FTC's position doesn't make a ton of sense, it does at least explain Phil Spencer's odd December 6th announcement pledging 10 years of Call of Duty on Nintendo platforms <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, in their argument, I don't know, maybe he's been enjoying his Switch Lite. <laughs> in their argument, the FTC explains at length how the Switch isn't proper competition with the PS5 and Xbox series due to its lower performance. By announcing this prospective deal, Spencer's already shot holes in the FTC's argument. If Call of Duty can run on a Switch, then not only is the FTC's framing of the console space wrong, uh, which... It's, it's kind of, yeah. Uh, but it also proves competition in this space isn't constrained by hardware platforms, and it isn't. Although the, the Switch, you know, it will not be uh, the same experience. <laughs> well, of course not, yeah. Feels worth noting. <laughs> but it can still compete even though it doesn't have the same games, I guess, might be the idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but it doesn't really matter what, what I think or Charlotte thinks. Well, it matters what Charlotte thinks, but it doesn't matter what, what Bruce thinks. Sorry, man. That's right. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and the audience, unfortunately, doesn't really matter what you think either. It matters what a judge thinks, whatever DC Court of Appeals judge they happen to get. It's possible that misrepresenting the ubiquity of the console space will make the proper case to a judge. And I think I think it's just more probable than not that it'll reduce competition. It's not like a, a criminal proceeding. So there's still a shot here. Uh, and in that regard, predictions are kind of all over the map of this thing. Seeking Alpha provides an analyst charcuterie board with Cohen's Doug Krutz giving the deal a 30% chance of survival. Ooh. Oppenheimer saying it's more likely than not that at least one territory will block the deal. And Wedbush's Michael Pactor expecting a mid-April close on the acquisition. Yeah, Pactor thinks it'll just go through. Okay. So the thing is, though, if Microsoft can't smooth this lawsuit over and reach some kind of early agreement, offer some concessions with the FTC, then we'll probably be hearing about this for a long, long while. Or Microsoft just decides to back out in the first place because they did that shit back in the late 90s and probably don't want to do it again. The next procedural step from here uh, will be a hearing on August 2nd, 2023. If Microsoft doesn't like the resulting ruling from that hearing, and odds are they won't if it comes to that, they can appeal to the Federal Circuit Court and from there to the Supreme Court. And of course that process can take five years, maybe the better part of a decade. Mm, wow. Okay, well, here's an open question. Charlotte, Lawrence, and the audience. Do console exclusives create competition? or do they destroy competition? It's a great question. Charlotte, what do you think? I, I think it's, you know, everything in moderation, right? If, if you're operating at a scope at which you can add really valuable exclusives to your lineup for your console, I think it's only truly competitive if the other side is posi well positioned enough to do the same. 
uh, with their own consoles, right? So like, you know, as it stands, like Microsoft does have powerful exclusives under its belt and it's always trying to start new IP, but Sony, I mean, has that stuff locked down. So like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've, I, I've always felt kind of weird about this, this acquisition. And uh, it's also strange to see something that's previously been like very multi-platform. Uh, Call of Duty games have appeared on Nintendo consoles in the past too. So it, it, it feels regressive almost to see it like that. That doesn't feel like competition. From, from where I'm standing, uh, exclusivity absolutely breeds competition in this case. Uh, and I'm, the only kind of other thing I can think of is like with st the streaming wars. So we got Apple TV, we got Netflix, we got, and I have to go and give Apple TV my money if I want to watch a show like Slow Horses or uh, For All Mankind. And I've done that. Um, and they got my money because I can't watch that media on anything else. I can't watch it on Netflix or whatever else. So so to me, it is actually absolutely there's a competition for who's going to get my money or, you know, obviously I'm lucky enough to where I can do both. But if you can't, if you could only spare eight bucks a month for one streaming service, then you got to decide. Um, and uh, I currently, if we're looking at a 10% market share for Microsoft, if they acquire Activision Blizzard, to me, that does not sound like a world ending deal. Uh, but I also really appreciate that Lena Khan is making an example of this and wants to stop the Megacorp. So I'm kind of like on both sides of it. I, I really love that she's like, we're going to stop it here. But also... Whatever. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling it both ways. I don't know. I I wonder. I mean, this is like a pie in the sky thing. Uh, but I wonder if there's like a compromise sort of path forward where cause Activision Blizzard King is its own sort of like mini monopoly of like acquiring super. And I wonder if there's a world where they break that up and like the pieces get divvied out or something. It's I don't know. It's this this stuff gets super weird. Like the Warner Brothers Discovery stuff that like. For AT and T to get rid of Warner, they had to spin it off into a different company. With an I, I, I don't know. It, the the algebra takes on its own life at that point. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. Activision Blizzard King could dice up their company and sell parts of it and keep keep parts of it. Hmm. Uh, I guess the competition aspect for me is bizarre because it's like, it's it's these terms are used interchangeably, like competition on one hand, but consumer choice on the other. Theoretically. Theoretically, uh, exclusives create competition, but reduce choice. Like if you want to play a thing, you've got one place to go and that's it. But it's the investment in those uh, exclusives that create competition. And I think there's something really interesting about even the artistic aspect of having to find those projects to vest in. I think it creates a real hunger for very distinctive and powerful artistic projects to capture people's attention. So I think in that way, it can actually stimulate you know, artistic output, even though it's all under a capitalist lens. But uh, I'm kind of okay with exclusives driving console purchases. That's, that's kind of the point. And that just kind of means that Sony has to do something to compete. They spent a long time trying to make shooter franchises and gave up because they really didn't have to. Now they have to again. They used to make handheld hardware and decided that they didn't want to do that either because co competing there was too hard. So it's weird that the FTC has chosen high-spec consoles to be the only focal point of this when Sony in the past has opted out of the markets that would have prevented them from being in this position to begin with. So that's not Microsoft's fault, really. Uh, and I think a lot of people would have liked Sony to keep making kill zones and PSPs. So ah, maybe they could start that now, but they're kind of behind the eight ball, so I get it. So they have to fight it the way that they can. It's just, to me, it's really odd that the FTC is picking up that narrative so cleanly. Um, but they probably read Sony's or they read Sony's complaints in other regions and maybe decided to run with it. So, but yeah, in conclusion, I'm, I feel the same where I kind of like the fight. I love that the U S government is finally getting off their asses and doing something. And I think over a 10 year time span, it's probably better that Microsoft doesn't own all that stuff. But for now it would be pretty neat. And I think it would mean that a lot of people get to play a lot of games for a really cheap price. So it's it's hard to it's hard to pick who to root for, but I just like throwing popcorn at everybody, I guess. Not to mention the FTC is kind of fucking up the whole thing. They like the EU is saying they're lying, and the FTC is saying a bunch of shit that doesn't make any sense. It's like I I don't know the whole the whole thing is hilarious. But here are some patrons that think the FTC is full of shit, just like we do. Uh, Charles Guard, Matt, Talia Monochrome, Pitstrip. And Joshua Smith and Aiden Foley, way to go. And you know what's weird, Bruce? All these patrons agree with every single thing the FTC said for some reason. I mean, if you want to, that's fine, but a little odd. Guthrie Leith, Nick Calderon, Scotty Rod, 
Scotty Ryan, Raulo, and Ray Pichardo. Interesting pick. Oh, oh, also, before we go, quick shout out. Oh, actually, Charlotte, did you want to shout out your single? I didn't don't mean to ambush you with it, but. Oh, yeah. No. Let me do it. Let me promote. <clears throat> I released the new song. It's called Stop, Comma, Go. Well, it's called Stop, Go. The comma is a grammatical you know, punctuation. Anyway, uh, it's under Mom's Home, wherever you listen to music. It seems to be doing well. People seem to like it, which is sick. There's a music video on my YouTube channel, which is Charlotte Avery. Um, I have some show announcements coming up. Uh, I guess this is coming out tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow, Saturday, the 17th, if you are... For some reason, in the Inland Empire, in the San Bernardino area, I'll be playing a backyard festival in Highland, California. You can find the info, yeah, the, the details on my Instagram and Twitter. And uh, one last thing from a friend of the Inside Games family, uh, Seeking Alpha is a, an investment resource that we've cited because of their industry news before. Uh, we actually have an affiliate, we have an affiliation with them. Uh, they're offering a New Year's sale. So if you want a whole year of premium, you can get that for just 40 bucks instead of their usual price of $240. If you feel like checking that out, we have a referral link down in the description. Check it out. We use them a lot and we, we vouch for them. 